Hello and welcome to this April edition of Amundi's Market Review. The war in Ukraine continues and we are deeply saddened by the huge number of casualties and the disrupted lives of all those affected. The current situation continues to reinvigorate our regime shifts toward longer medium-term inflation, deteriorating economic and earnings growth that remain in key focus. Higher input and energy prices in particular, oil prices moved on average 35% higher, natural gas almost 30%, represent a key challenge for production, especially in Europe. Risk assets eventually held up well, despite the race towards higher rates. The Japanese topics index was the best performer of the month with an increase of almost 5%, while the American S&P 500 index was less than 1%. European equities lost ground in the course of the last week, lending to almost minus 4%. Chinese equities remain negative year to date with a decline of 11% for the Hang Seng index after dropping over than 20% since January heights amid regulatory risk on the tech sector. Chinese authorities intervened to calm market sell-off, thus driving a spectacular movement to the upside, in particular on assets that at a center point fell under the threat of sanctions and concerns of a new lockdown in China. We expect this new lockdown to cost 0.2% to 0.3% on Chinese GDP projection for 2022, now revised down to 4% this year. Rates continue to move higher this month. US curve short rates moved aggressively higher. The move dragged the yields of German and British government bonds higher as well. The US 10-year Treasury rate is at 2.5%, the German Bund at 0.6%, and the British yield 10 years at 1.7%. Once shaped of inflation, resulting real yields remain deeply in negative territory. This is a firm anchor for equity returns. The lift was driven by oscillating optimism on the Russia-Ukraine front and by the expectation for the Fed to raise rates more aggressively. It is clear that inflation control is now the main objective of the Fed and of the ECB. We think the Fed is way behind the curve and needs to catch up by front-loading the rate hikes. We expect this to be the likely case until the summer, with potential hikes of 50 basis points in May and possibly in June monetary policy meetings. By then, we expect inflation to have reached its peak, diluting the political pressure on the Fed. Inflation is mainly driven by supply-side factors that are moderating over the medium term. In the second half of the year, we might see some economic slowdown and the Fed should balance its eagerness for normalization and the tightening in financial conditions, thus potentially challenging risk assets. There are additional constraints for the Fed. In any case, the rhetoric of the Fed should remain hawkish until at least the meeting in May. This should continue to press rates higher. Investors' attention is focused on central banks' policy response. While their stance is the main market driver, we are convinced it is time for the fiscal policy to act and address the economic stress this conflict is exacerbating. We appreciate the recent developments of the euro area front that is showing a more consensual stance towards a joint economic impulse. In credit, risks are more related to liquidity than fundamentals at this stage. Therefore, we reduced our credit exposure. In equity, we are more focused on quality stocks with good balance sheet, low leverage, and possibly high dividends. We changed our regional preference. We are now tactically positioned on US equities versus European ones, and tactically moved neutral on China. We continue to hold a short duration bias that we adjust as an hedge during periods of turbulence. To conclude, we retain our cautious stance on risk assets as the current environment of higher rates and liquidity reduction does not bode well for equities. Please keep safe and see you next month for another market review. TMB และธนาชาติเปลี่ยนเป็น TTB เปลี่ยนเพื่อให้ชีวิตคุณดีขึ้น